Good morning, YouTube. Well, uh, over the last couple days, I put a new uh, uh, brake system air compressor on. The old one was leaking a little bit of oil into the system. Uh, figure the piston and the compressor were just worn out and leaking. It's probably the original one, um, and it it was time. Uh, took a little bit of effort to put it in. It weighed about 45 pounds and uh, was fun, but it slid right into place and uh, over the course of a couple days I didn't push it I got that in so today we are uh, my son and I are going to put uh, new brake shoes all the way around and uh, we looked at them a year ago they had a they had plenty of wear on them for a year but they were at the point where we figured we have to replace them and, and we'll do it now um, so let's get to it I'll show you how uh, air brake systems actually work um, well, all the components and um, we'll show you how this all goes. called having the right tool for the right job. Right. That was like it was off last year. So right now, because it's spinning like that, we're probably okay to you know just hit it with a hammer and shift back it off and off. Right. Um, that means that you draw, your brakes aren't Adjusted. Adjusted properly at this point. Right. So, smaller hammer typically. If that doesn't work, you have a bigger persuader hammer. Right. So, tap around on the edges up here. Okay. seems pretty loose on the drum now. They're on the... Yeah. I hadn't adjusted them in a little while. So, yeah, if it's doing that, that's that's good. That should get it right off of it now. Well, I I can see it loosen as you're hitting it, loosen it up around here. Yeah. But well, that's probably where it's sticking. Yeah, that's usually where it sticks. So, what size is that again? Is it 16 Yeah, great. I think so. I got my sock sockets right inside here if you want. Yeah, yeah I got them. Just enough. Brakes were just catching up. This is super heavy, so if you got a bad back, find somebody younger to do this it. This is why. This is why I wait for my son to be here. Those don't look bad. No, they're not cup. What you're looking for is cupping on the inside here. If it's really deep cut right there, right on the edge, then you don't. You want to replace the drums. Right. They're not. So you're fine. Well, I was just looking at the pads, and there's a lot of. There's a lot of pads. I thought we changed these last year. Huh? I thought we changed these ones last year. No, we didn't change anything. We just looked at them. Huh? I think the rear ones were worse. Remember the... Yeah. So... But hey, we're at this point. That's a lot of pad. I mean, honestly... I wouldn't change that. In all honesty. You can always return it. Yeah, I can return the other ones. That's, that's a ton of padding on it. I mean... If you want to take a look at uh, the gas cam there. Well, it's on. I'll just edit out whatever. Okay. You shouldn't have to. No, just hit the brakes. Alright. Okay. You're good. So what you're look what you're looking at is you, you should be seeing the S cam here. When he hits the brakes, go ahead. See how that it pushes out. What it does is it pushes your, it pushes your pads out, 
and that actually is what your braking power is. That's that's it. It's these are super simple, super easy. Um, you know, there's not much to explain on. They they've got a little pin back in here that they rest on on the other side. Uh, yeah, they're working fine. And okay, what they just they weren't adjusted. It what like. moves it is this. We call an air can. Is uh, when I hit the brakes, it lets the air, well the air in the system. Uh, keeps the brakes on or I mean off when I hit the brakes it releases the pressure which lets the pin that's in here push this which is your uh, slack, adjuster. slack adjuster which is you can adjust here which you see them and that moves <laughs> internally and some gears moves the the S cam the slack adjuster is ratcheted on the inside the back of the S cam the S cam where it attached to the slack adjuster is also uh, it has splines on it. So, right. your, so that that's your adjustment there is it'll turn those splines without you know basically as you're adjusting on the, the slack adjuster, it turns that turns that S cam to adjust it. Right. And last year we replaced the ones on the back because they were both froze up and I had no rear brakes and drove all the way across the country without realizing it. So tone wheel. We'll open this one up. Okay, as, as we're looking at this, we've decided that this side, I don't need to replace. There's a lot of pad left. Um, and there's, you can see right here where it's the what divot goes in. That's the point where it's like, yeah, you definitely need to replace these brakes. Um, I believe the ones on the back, we'll be able to show you some that are probably really worn out. On the new ones, what this, looking this at is the what new a new ones? one looks like. When it hits to that, that ridge right there, then it's time to replace them. That's where it's. That's where they become illegal. Anywhere else, you compare those to these. You've got tons of. Yeah. Yeah, you've got tons of pads still left. So we're not going to replace this side. Let's go take a look. Uh, we're tearing the other side and see how that is. Maybe I'll get lucky and save a few, you know, hundred bucks or so. So what he's doing, all the way to tight. So now the wheel is not turning. Okay. All the way to tight. Then you want to do. We're about a half a turn back. I let it spin freely, but see how it still kind of catches? Right. So it's spinning freely, but that's right about perfect. So I say it is. I can we can spin it, but as I let go, it's it stops slowly, but not like freewheeling like it was doing. Yeah. Right there, that's that's about perfect. And I should crawl under here and do that once a week. Once a week. Try to <sighs> at least every other week. All right, it's, it's on my schedule now. I'm gonna make a note. So the other way to do this, if you've actually got your brakes set like he does now on this side, what you do is put a wheel chalk in on your back so that you're not going to go anywhere. Release your brakes, pump your brakes all the way down. Let like start the, the vehicle up, air it all the way up, shut it off, leave the brakes released, pump them down until the, the brake uh, release pops back out. At that point, you should be okay. They're, they're self-adjusting brakes self-adjusting slack slack adjusters so they should actually ratchet into place when you do that some don't have them some of the older older buses and older models don't have that now but check with your you know check with the dealer and see what what you've got and and I've found even in vehicles with self-adjusting brakes they don't always they don't always yeah so yeah that one's down so forgive the noise from the, the truck and the compressor and stuff but we talked about those grooves. This one is right down to it. So we're going to replace this one. Yeah, I, I like the fact that there's cobwebs in it. But uh, let me go actuate it. We'll make sure everything else is working. Yeah. So. Okay, on my particular bus, 
Um, I went to last year. I checked with um, Bluebird, and they wanted to sell me one brake shoe for two hundred dollars. And now I'm looking at it. It was nowhere near what I needed. We when we pulled it off last year, we noticed, and you see on these Bluebird and Salt Lake. Yeah, Bluebird and Salt Lake. Although I did check one back in Rochester, it was the same price. Um, this number forty-seven nineteen. We bought these, or my son picked these up at uh, Freightliner. That was the number we're looking at, and that's what I have on my bus. So uh, somewhere along the line, the, either the uh, school district got smart and figured they could save a ton of money and did this because there's enough room in the drum for those bigger ones. They were a little bit wider. This is what was on my bus. So it pays to take a peek. Okay. Oh, yeah, and these uh, front ones were like $47 for this set as opposed to 400 um, for the Bluebird ones. But when you open up the box from Freightliner, you're gonna have two shoes. You're gonna have a pack with all the springs and hardware that you need to put it on. So now we're gonna do that. All right, what you're looking at, you've got your brakes on here, we've got the drums off. You wanna, you're gonna be finding these springs on the back. You got a spring on either side on the back that's gonna look like this. There's another main spring up here. Some of these will just have a solid spring that goes from one shoe to the other. These ones, for whatever reason, I haven't, I haven't seen this set up before, but these have got a double spring with a spacer kind of holding in between. So we're gonna see how this goes. Um, it should be pretty similar on it though. Uh, I gotta look at the, the parts in here really quick, but I think we're, yeah. See this has got a main spring instead of that, that double spring like this. That's the only difference. Some of these will have it, some of them won't like that. What you wanna do, get a pair of vice grips, get them onto this back spring there, use your axle, and what you're gonna do is you, you, wanna, pop, side here. you wanna pop down. Basically as it, as it comes off, it's gonna have that little hook pop down and that's all that's all it is on that same thing on the back side just find a good spot to get onto it try and pop those off and this whole thing will peel right off so you're using the, the voice grips as a lever point yeah exactly so what Sean's doing now he's taking the dust shield off the inside because we he couldn't get at the the inner spring to get that uh, Voice grip on it, so just move it out of the way. It's a few bolts. Okay, it looks like with his setup that he's got here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna back these brakes. We want to get that S cam all the way back in as close as possible on it. So, that's gonna loosen this up, it's gonna loosen all the brakes up already off of that spring. It's going to take all that tension off of those springs. Uh, so when, when the slack adjuster is all the way out, the S-cam is cradling the, the roller here. Yeah. So when this turn, when I hit the brakes, it turns this way yeah. and the roller rides up here. This is, this is all the way released right now. The way these are, the way I've got this done, right. this is released all the way. So if we turned it all the way back, or pretty far back, that's all the way, It's it'll be tightened all the way basically, one of the drums on there. Right. So, so now he's got the rear springs off. The rear springs off. What are you gonna do? You wanna grab your pry bar, you get in here, and you've got, that's your pivot point right there. You can kinda see it. So that, that'll just pop right up and off. And then same thing on the bottom. They just pivot off, right? So it looks like that may just be a piece. It doesn't look like that is actually attached. That spacer on there. So, so yeah. On this one, we may not have had to back those off. Did 
Looks like it's connected on me. What's that? I get a weird connection on that. Look at that slide adjuster. This is not a normal setup, just so most people know. Usually, most air brakes don't have that little spacer in there anymore. So I'm going to see if I can just get the spring off right here. Normally you have the, the main spring goes all the way across. Yeah, yeah, normally that, that main spring just goes all the way across, so it's not really, it's not going to cause any issues like this. Yeah. This looks like it's actually connected directly in to the, uh, behind the S-cam there. That's, that's where your spring connects. There's a little pin that goes across. And we'll show you on the next, uh, when we put the next ones yep. together, show you how they go. Okay, so side by side uh, from the inside. Now let's flip these things over, we'll show you what they look like uh, side by side on the outside. Okay, so this is side by side uh, from the working side. And you see, it's, there's not a whole lot, but this part of the shoe is correct. And uh, hey, we're at this point. Let's replace it. So what you're going to be looking at on this old one, if you look, you've got your rollers set up. There's a little spring right here. And it basically it connects into these, these little holes right here on the inside. Right. It just clips around it. And then what you want to do, just aim it in, and you kind of squeeze them in like that, and just pop them right in. That's it. Quick and easy. Yep. Uh, we'll get the one on the Let's see how this does before we actually... All right. So we're looking at the old, old brakes had this piece that the little hinges, or the little springs were... Uh, so it would get around the S cam, and we're looking at this is the the one that came with the kit doesn't have it, but we're gonna try try not to break the new shoes. Yeah, <laughs> and They're pretty durable. Uh, it was a, a stress test. We always got to do that. Not um, so I can put this down. We're gonna see if it'll fit around that without problem with this new spring. Um, Hopefully, if so, then we'll get rid of that old, uh, the old piece that's in there. If not, we're going to end up having to use the old springs. Not a big deal. I mean, they still work. Looks like it's got to come this way a little. Yeah, it will. Well, the roller's yeah. hitting. The roller's hitting right there. Got it. You always got to play with these a little. the other way and pry up on the axle. Right 
There we go. So you think that piece is going to not be in the way? I don't think it's really going to matter too much on that. Just leave it yeah. on in case the uh, five years down the road, which we're anticipating with my little bit of driving, uh, the next time this gets replaced, if the kit comes with the two short springs, it's there. Okay. Okay, it's, so it's he's, got, he's got it uh, on this. Pivot pin right here. You got to put the springs in front and back to basically hold the, the two shoes on that. And then uh, it's uh, put the drum back on and uh, dust cover in the drum and dressed it. So, yeah, it's a reverse of what we did on. So the basically, putting putting the springs on is just a reverse of taking them off. Yeah. You know, going to use the the vice grips as a lever point and the axle is a. Uh, the full chrome and pull them down, slide them into place. That's it. So we're uh, saved the last <laughs> best side for last because I'm putting uh, putting two new tires on. If you remember, last year we put two new steers on the front, uh, and then during the winter I had a slice and a tire on the driver's side, so I replaced those two. So now we're replacing these two. One's uh, one's we're replacing are 10 years old, way too old for tire. But well, was the end of a somewhat long day, and um, the uh, hopefully we gave you a nice overview of how air brakes work, and how to replace the shoes, uh, how to adjust them, and how often to adjust them. Um, it does pay to pull the wheel, pull off uh, the drum, and see what you got before you go buy new brakes. Um, always good to inspect them uh, if you can. And uh, in, in my case, of uh, $200 per shoe, so $400 a wheel um, uh, from uh, the Bluebird here in Salt Lake, as opposed to going to Freightliner and getting the ones that are match the ones what were on my bus for $47 for the front and $49 for the rear. So pays to take a look. I saved a bunch of money. Um, so uh, that's it for fixing the buses that my son's this year. Uh, I am going to get on the road and we will see what I discover uh, after a, uh, a little bit of a fun break. And that'll be in the next video. So I'll see you later, YouTube. And uh, see you down the road. So YouTube, if you um, ever decide to buy a bus, um, what you need to do is plan ahead 30, 37 years and uh, have a son, get him interested in, uh, you know, get him crawling under vehicles with you and have eventually have him become a mechanic. And um, then, you know, show up at his house and go, help, I need help, I'm an old guy. Retired mechanic. Yeah. Okay, retired. I'm sorry. He's now a retired mechanic who owns his own truck and does all the work on that. So he's sort of semi-retired mechanic. Yeah. Well, not all the work.